If you as a white person tell them that you are not racist, they will tell you no, it's racist to say you're not racist because you are racist. And so what you need to do is... So every time they import a new voter, I become disenfranchised. That what we are facing and what we are about to face in the near future is pedophilia. I believe that that is one inch away from transgenderism. I'm not a feminist. I can see men and I don't immediately feel threatened. A feminist. I can actually cook. That was great. The majority of my money was actually made in the pimp game. I say that people think I'm making it up. It's true. So I messaged her. She's like, I'm only 16. I was like, give a fuck. No about me. 21, I don't care. What is you guys' body counts? 9, 10. Stop! I want to get another room. When I was 18 years old, playing a fucking Halo, figuring out my life, no bitch would have taken me. So now that I'm up, you are down. Fuck that shit. I'm going to exercise the leverage. Oh, it's Anthony Diastano here with the Leftist Bread Tuber Starter Pack, mic in hand, and a video in the background. However, today I'm not going to react to TikToks and go, wow, don't these guys suck? Because that's just not my MO on this channel, and I'm not one of those people. I've made countless videos on how social media algorithms are weaponized by the military, government, and bad actors. But recently, I had an Instagram post about the Daily Wire blow up. Did you know that all of your right-wing figures are plants slash actors? Candace Owens, who is famous for saying racism isn't real, actually won a lawsuit for racial discrimination. She was later cited on a talent search website for actors. Ben Shapiro is a failed screenwriter, and Steven Crowder is a failed stand-up comedian. Even Brett Cooper and Michael Knowles have had acting careers, with Michael acting in LGBTQ roles. As of this recording, that video has about 250,000 views, which great W for me. Uh, most people in the comments agree with me, but there was a lot of butthurt uh, Daily Wire fans and right wingers that were like, what does this mean? Because they were actors. Rah, 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 rah. So in this video, I'm going to break down why the Daily Wire is absolute dog shit and it's just meant to divide all of us. The Daily Wire is a lot like the Justice League if it was filled with grifters who pretend that they're actually saving society. The Daily Wire was founded by Ben Shapiro and funded by two mega conservative oil billionaires who think that global warming is God's punishment for us sinning. So it was already off to a great start. Funnily enough, the same oil billionaires fund Prager University, which also makes content for children with classics like Being taken as a slave is better than being killed, no? I don't see the problem. Besides the insane funders and their pushing of actors and comedians into political spaces, the reason why The Daily Wire sucks is because their content revolves around keeping people angry and scared. They constantly tell their audience that liberals are all weak snowflakes, yet they run everything and want all white people replaced. Communists are stupid anti-American traitors, but somehow they've infiltrated society with cultural Marxism. Like, genuinely ask yourself, when's the last time you've seen a Daily Wire poster clip that wasn't talking about the most asinine issues or reacting to cherry pick content. They even made a channel to appeal to Gen Z with a host who literally looks like she could be related to Ben Shapiro. Despite constantly pointing fingers at Democrats and leftists, they seem to do most of the division in the current political landscape with Matt Walsh and Candace Owens. These two commodify and sensationalize issues like race relations, police brutality, and trans rights. Trans people make up less than 1% of the United States population, yet The Daily Wire has constantly fear-mongered about them and made two feature-length movies about transgenderism, with one being a comedy at trans people's expense. Unless you've been living under a rock, you've probably seen some form of red pill content in the past year. Even if you're not online, you've probably had your single friend hit you with the All women are the same, bro. That's why I'm gonna drop ship, go to the gym, and make my ex pay. You're just blue-pilled and soy. Basically, the entire red pill movement uses an allegory created by two trans women to push conservatism and the truth of dating dynamics. I've already made countless videos on the red pill and advice to young men, so it'd just be beating a dead horse, but the problem with this content is that it's just a reskin of Gamergate and anti-SJW compilations. They debate with women they know aren't seen well in society and aren't skilled talkers, and then tell the audience they're representative of the modern woman. Whenever they actually have people on that challenge and debunk them, they get exposed for being emotional man-children. Andrew Tate and these creators claim that they're improving men, but their most popular videos by far are always the ones where they're screaming at and ranting about the modern woman. A drunk college-age girl with an OnlyFans is not the best representative of the average woman. Speaking of which, they completely fearmonger about feminists. 
Feminists aren't all blue-haired women who want to kill men. The feminists that get put onto these modern women interviews and podcasts are there specifically to get a reaction. The entire system for red pill content is to give young men surface level advice, make them hate women even more than they may already, and then have those boys give them money and undying support. Working out, being more confident, and staying disciplined are all good things. Sitting at home watching women get screamed at, posting L women, and calling other men soy betas are not. In a previous video, I coined the term of intellectual cuckoldry. People who make react content mostly rely on getting the most provocative clips and people to make content on. Most of the time, this leads to a snowball effect of people specializing in a specific topic. It's painfully easy now to go online, look up some person from a demographic, say or do something dumb or fucked up, and then make a video reacting to it. Bonus points if you title it something like, Entitled Woke SJW Says Laptops Are Racist. This type of content leads to a sense of false reality. However, and I stress the however, we must realize that content creation is creation. The creation of narratives and reality. The choice of a topic, its execution, and how it will appeal to the algorithm, and subsequently us as humans, is all in the hands of the creator in our digital age. Selective evidence and anecdotes aim to fuel our emotions, and no emotion is better in politics than anger. If you watch a lot of react channels that only focus on stuff like libtards, chuds, modern women, and wokeness, you're gonna have a narrow view of the world. You start to put a bunch of labels on people you don't even know. I have so many people come onto my page and say some shit like, I bet you love Biden, you call me liberal. And then I have to explain why everything they said in that sentence is a contradiction. My platform has always been about combating misinformation, narratives, and kind of retaking the political landscape in favor of the left. Uh, in a way that I haven't seen other people do. And one of the main things with this is I want people to think for themselves. And I know that's cliche, but really have a foundation and morals to build off of rather than just having somebody online tell them what to think. And it becomes even more insidious when stuff like that is commodified and people have real incentive to just ruin your brain just for money. Uh, I realize, like I said, we're all going to have disagreements, but I want people to be responsible and look into the type of people that they're they're funding and believing and going all in. Because me personally, I've gotten a lot of DMs from people saying I changed their mind or that they agree with me now and they love my content. So I would say to truly unite the nation is to have everybody on equal footing with information and how they think. I don't know though, it's like 6.30 a.m. I've been doing this video all night, but in summary, if you like the video, uh, have any constructive criticism, make sure to comment it. I try to respond to all my DMs, but sometimes, you know, it gets flooded. It's just better to comment. Uh, I got my Discord in my bio, and yeah, until the next video, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for the 10.